Bill Watterson, the drawer of Calvin and Hobbes, once said, You can't just turn on creativity like a faucet. You have to be in the right mood. What mood is that? Last minute panic. Viewing creativity like this is not new. We were taught that inspiration comes to us only so often after hours, days, months, and perhaps even years of procrastination and suffering. In movies and TV shows, artists are frequently portrayed as lazy, unable to deliver, and succumbing to drugs and alcohol as an attempt to reignite what made them famous in the first place. To be fair, there are a few artists that fit this picture, but in my opinion, holding creativity and the creative process in this way Way is deeply mistaken. We've seen it a thousand times already. There's this famous artist that's trying to create a new novel, a new hit song, or a new innovative idea that will revolutionize the world once again. After sitting down and trying for hours, nothing comes to him or her. Days go by and the poor fellow keeps staring at the blank canvas, waiting for inspiration to strike, but there's nothing. Tired and hopeless, he goes for a drink to see if a couple of vodka shots and cigarettes can reignite his lost spark, can make his lost muse come back, but it doesn't happen, she's nowhere to be found. After weeks of desperation, a wake-up call in the form of an event, person or thought happens to a few lucky ones and with refreshed inspiration are finally able to create and produce that awaited masterpiece. The other half is not fortunate enough and their muses never return. They are the ones that fall victim to a life of unproductivity, unhappiness and addictions. Although these are extreme scenarios mostly found in movies and TV shows, there are a few artists that view themselves and their work in this way, waiting for inspiration to strike. George R. R. Martin published the first book of the Game of Thrones series in 1996, and after more than 25 years, he still hasn't finished the two books that will conclude the story. And some of them don't seem to understand that uh, writers are different from each other. I mean, they, they will point out to be some other writer, and you know, in the time you've been working on Winds of Winter, he's published seven novels, and indeed, there are writers who do that. There are writers who you can practically set your watch by. They publish a novel a year, boom, boom, boom. And that's great, I wish I could do that, but uh, I can't, I never could. The mangaka and creator of the famous shounen Hunter x Hunter, Yoshihiro Togashi, began his last manga in 1998, and to this date, he still hasn't finished it and the last chapter's release was in late 2018. Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, a French painter and one of the pioneers in the post-impressionist period, worked mostly during the night in cabarets and after several drinks, he only made it to 36. Artists and people that need to be creative to make a living can relate. Sitting down to create something new, whether that's a song, a painting, a movie, a script, a business strategy, or a scientific paper, seems to always elicit some form of internal conflict. But students and workers from different industries that need to finish an assignment or deliver a report also suffer from this negative force, which Steven Pressfield calls resistance. He defines it as an act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, health, and integrity integrity, or any act that derives from our higher nature instead of our lower elicits resistance. Resistance is the hallmark of the creative process. It's an inner force that stands in the way of us creating something useful and powerful. It will attempt anything to prevent us from sitting down, and if we manage to do so, we'll generate hundreds of different distractions and excuses that will make us leave the work we have in front of us. It happens to me, to you, and even to famous artists like J.K. Rowling, Franz Kafka, and as we've seen, George R. R. Martin. So the question is, is there any way to beat resistance and stop letting our creativity be limited to our mood? Steven Pressfield thinks so, and his solution is to build up discipline and become a pro. Have you ever noticed that you don't need to motivate yourself to get up in the morning and go to work or school? Day in and day out, no matter if it's raining, you feel a bit sick, or you had a horrible night of sleep, you get out of your bed, get dressed, and fulfill your duty. Why is that? It's because in that area of your life, you become a professional. Professionals, Pressfield says, share the following qualities. They show up every day no matter what. They are committed over the long haul. They are patient and know that it will take twice as long. They accept no excuses. They are prepared to confront their self-sabotage every day. 
When we face our creative endeavors as professionals and not as amateurs, we stop waiting for inspiration to strike because we know that the mere fact of sitting down and starting to create will generate the fuel for its continuation. The professional knows that resistance is waiting for him or her each and every morning they wake up, but they are willing to face it and defeat it over and over again. Pressfield continues, What we get when we turn pro is we find our power. We find our will and our voice and we find our self-respect. We become who we always were but had, until then, been afraid to embrace and live out. By taking the act of creating as a job and not as a mere hobby, we elevate the quality and quantity of our work to the next level. It might take time, but it's only a matter of time. And what's really interesting is that many successful artists are very familiar with this mindset. When Stephen King, who wrote more than 80 books in his career, was asked by R.R. Martin how he did it, this was his response. George, we're gonna have to wrap this up pretty soon. Is there anything that you've always wanted to ask me? <laughs> because, George, I will. <laughs> yes, yes, there is something I want to ask you. All right. How the fuck do you write so many books so fast? <laughs> I think, oh, uh, I've had a really good six months. I've written three chapters, and you've, you've yeah, finished three books in that time. Here's the thing, okay? <laughs> that, uh, the way that I work, uh, I try to get out there, and I try to get six pages a day. When I'm working, I work every day, uh, three, four hours, and I try to get those six pages, and I try to get them fairly clean. So if the manuscript is, let's say, 360 pages long, that's basically two months' work. It's concentrated, but it's a fairly... Anthony Trollope, the English writer who produced 47 novels and 16 other books, says, It was my practice to be at my table every morning at 5.30 a.m. It was also my practice to allow myself no mercy. By beginning at that hour, I could complete my literary work before I dressed for breakfast. It had at this time become my custom to write with my watch before me, and to require of myself 250 words every quarter of an hour. You may love or hate Woody Allen's movies, but if there's something to acknowledge about him is his professional attitude. Since 1982, he's been releasing a new movie every new year. That's almost 40 years in a row. As he likes to say, 80% of success is showing up. And there are many, many more that are part of the professionals club, some being Pablo Picasso, Frank Zappa, The Beatles, and Paul McCartney. These artists knew that the best way to be creative is to be disciplined. To be disciplined enough to sit yourself down and create. It's hard at first, but as minutes go by, inspiration naturally begins to flow. It's time to let go of the childish image we have of the artist, a person who cannot stop procrastinating and falls into all kinds of temptations and addictions. Pressfield, King, Denial, Allen show us that by taking our creative work seriously, being self-disciplined, and stop letting ourselves be guided by petty emotions, it's how we find true inspiration. Or as W. Somerset Mahan would say, I write only when inspiration strikes. Fortunately, it strikes every morning at 9 o'clock sharp. This is Juan Cruz from Innerize, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and comment down below what you thought of it. See you soon.